1988, that was the first time a friend of mine took me down to the village. The place was called the Institute for the Protection of Gay and Lesbian Youth, which later would be called the Hedrick Martin Institute. And I heard the music in the distance, but when I turned that corner, I saw people that later would become family members and all that, but they were all voguing. They were dancing and carrying on, and they were loud and beautiful. And I was like to my friend, what are they doing? What is that? And he was like, they're voguing. They're our sisters, you know? And I was like, voguing? Like, what in the hell is voguing? What is that? It was like this, this art form that to me looked like they were just expressing themselves. Right? Yeah. And it just seemed like very, very liberating to me. And that's what drew me in instantly. Now there's like so many different um, voguing styles. Yeah. I'm known for old way slash pop, dip, and spin. Okay. But then you got Vogue fam, you got twists. So there's a bunch of different Vogue categories that pull on the performance. Mm -hmm. This is important to me because, uh, you know, Vogue fam and what is it, twist and what are the other ones? <laughs> Female figure <laughs> performance. You know what I'm saying? All those are really popular styles of Vogue. Right now. But Old Way is too, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want Old Way to uh, kind of get lost in the sauce. Old Way is basically, to me, that's the real Vogue. It's like, you know, it's a lot of precision. It's like, you know, arm controls, you know, the dips. And that was the original way that Vogue was performed on the dance floor. And of course, it was like the magazine and striking a pose. And so every move and position looked like a picture frame that would be in a magazine. They kept talking about this lady, Avis. <laughs> We're gonna go see Avis, you need to be a Pandavis. When there's the new kid in the block, everybody wants a piece of him, right? I became a member on that, you know, at that moment. Um, and so that's when you take the name. So I became Luna Pandavis. I met this man, his name was Timothy Leviticus, and he invited me to come to a house meeting. So I didn't understand what it was, I was like, I'm already in the house. I live at 1239 Stanley Avenue. I was like, what are you talking about? The significance of taking on the last name of the house, it was to create unity in the family. And that's part of the value system of houses. One of my closest friends and mentor was Willie Ninja. I went to a ball with him that was around 86, 87, and I fell in love. I went there and I saw everybody and I saw the costumes. I went to the ball and I was like, okay, this is a lot of fun. Next thing I know, I joined his house. Here I am today, decades later as an icon, and the overall mother of the house is soldier. I've never felt that type of acceptance in a community that way, and it caught me. A ball is a place where we showcase our talent. It's almost like we're the, the game. It's the game because if we're the team, then that's the game. And so we have to compete against other teams until the one person wins all of it. And the parents are sort of the uh, coaches. The mother is usually the one everybody looks at. That's the one that's leading the parade, the one in the front. They prepare you for everything, but not only in ballroom, because mothers also prepare you in, in life as well. You know, like Avis. Avis was like, you know, go to school or get a job. You know, you need to do important things. The fathers usually run meetings, and the houses you have monthly meetings where we all get together to talk as one. He's the one that if for some reason there's a little issue as you're competing, the father's usually the first one to go to the table, the judges, and be like, what happened here? Fathers are usually the ones that's like, okay, it's only competition. <laughs> a good father would do that. Yeah. Party, party, party. Everybody deserves this kind of AIDS, HIV prevention information. And we, as the House of Latex, can show up and share this information, and that provides power um, in the communities of the houses, the power of knowledge. I used to be a major dance club person, and I still am in my mind. And because I lived in dance clubs, uh, especially ones which uh, where a lot of gay men went, um, you know, they were disappearing. How many years have you been in the ball scene? Since the 70s, since 1979, the first time I went to the ball. 
Really? Uh huh. Who were your inspirations then and now? Um, then it was like Avis, um, Dory. Hector and I met um, in the 90s. Hector was a very kind person. He's one of the people that said something got to give with this AIDS thing that's happening in, in our community in the ballroom scene. Like, what's going on? But there was a collective of ballroom uh, people who were like, we gotta do something. And he started those conversations with the people that were working at GMAC at the time in 1989. The ballroom is such an important piece to not only the history, but to the story of GMHC. Many of the men and women who make up the house and ball community, young, gay and bisexual, men and women, trans women, people of color. These groups are those that are most disproportionately impacted by HIV. We have a responsibility to care for these people and to provide the services that they need. I learned from my colleagues in the prevention department that they were working with the leadership of the house and ball community from the late 80s into the early 90s. And so the leadership met with our leadership and they developed the House of Latex project. And I offered to help plan the first latex ball in 1994, which was really wonderful. <laughs> Why is it called the latex ball? Because it's about condoms and the importance of having safer sex. The latex ball is a ball that happens annually. It's been happening for 20-something years. It's a huge event. Mm -hmm. um, everybody comes out, even people from, from other countries come and celebrate with us during the Latex Bowl. And you're actually a judge this right. year at the Latex Bowl, correct? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I knew Hector Extravaganza for decades uh, because of the Latex Ball and our prevention programming. He was one of the leaders that first came to GMHC to help GMHC staff build the Latex Project and to develop the House of Latex and to organize the Latex Ball. And so that's how Latex was born. So Hector was a part of that. It's an honor working at GMHC because my connection to Avis and Hector, and now I'm somebody who helps put together the Latex Ball for the last 13 years. It's like the legacy continues, the stories continue. We continue to save lives and, you know, guide people. And that's what both Avis and Hector believe. They believed in giving of self and uh, getting involved and speaking your voice and using your voice and, and, um, and educating people. And they were great that way.